It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And it's Tajay Spears. He's coming off a great week, reaching triple digits in yards with a collection of touchdowns. It's the Desperados and the Browns, and it comes your way next. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League brings us to Cleveland Brown Stadium on the shores of Lake Erie. Today it's week three and we've got a good in store as it is the Desperados of San Antonio taking on the Cleveland Browns. Hi again everyone with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon and Charles we look at this Browns ball club. Now, losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for our visiting San Antonio Ball Club, it's been a great start to the season, back-to-back -back wins to begin the camp. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. That one's taken in by Spears. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 17 yards. Got the ball early and often. I have no doubt in my mind that it'll be a big part of the game plan here as well. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Good for 12 and a first down. Now the rookie third rounder from Tulane, it's Tajay Spears. Simply not much more you can ask out of your running back. Over 100 yards and the three touchdowns. And for an old coot like me, I loved it because he did it on the ground. A running back taking control of the game. That's what I like to hold see. Hold on, hold on. An old coot? Coot, C-O-O-T. All right, I'll look that up later. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up in here are the key and actives for them in this one, and obviously Charles are going to be without some important names this week. Well, hopefully those guys will be on the sidelines encouraging the guys who are going out there and helping them when they come off the sidelines during the game by giving them some tips on what they see and what they've experienced. That's true teamwork, and if you want to get to the playoffs, if you want to have a big push, you have to have that in your squad. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. And the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity missed there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. And he was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. And this will do the job nicely as that'll be out of bounds just inside the 10-yard line. The offense back out there at the line ready for their next drive. The crowd may be losing just a little bit of the edge after back-to-back -back punts. They want some big plays. They want to see some offense. They want to see somebody break away whether it's through the air or on the ground. Now it'll be interesting to see where the patience is on both sides. Each head coach, can you hang in there and not try and force something that could put your team in some jeopardy? In motion, the tight end. Here's Spears on second down. And he'll get this one up to about his 14. Call it a gain of a yard, and it's going to bring up third and five. The completion on first didn't get much, and the run on second doesn't get a whole lot either. situation already down in his play sheet trying to dial up a big third down play now throwing on third down there but he cannot connect that looks like it's going to be two empty possessions now to start this football game i think they're going to have to sit down and talk about what worked for them last week in their win sometimes you over game plan overthink things get back to what works it'll be 37 yards there on the punt and the browns have a short So the football will be at the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. They'll try and start this drive in the air. 
And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. That's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish it as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play in one of their first tests in containing a quarterback on the run. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. They'll look to throw. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Chris Moore was the intended target, and now it's second down. We look at this Browns defense. And they've shown the ability to play tough against the pass, currently ranked number nine in the NFL. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top ten in the league against the pass, but the bottom half of the league in sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this crew ever put pressure on the QB, then easily move it to the top five. And in search of eight yards here as they hope to convert the first down. That's complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 39. 23 yards on the play. So a first and 10 upcoming from Browns territory now at the 39-yard line. They'll set up a throw. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Haven't met a corner that's worth the salt yet that ever admits to worried about man coverage. How about the play there, breaking that pass up? Out of the gun, a give to Spears. Five yards, now it's third and five. Well, I'd say we're well past the time that we're trying to work out the kinks of the season, aren't we? We're already into week three, and he's looking really, really strong. Already he's won an AFC for the week ago. Yeah, did that a week ago, a week two, with runs like that, and then so. After one on EA Sports. Second quarter now, San Antonio in possession. This offense so far on third down, just one for three thus far. This will be third and five. Back to throw here. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. They've had multiple opportunities on offense and still haven't scored any points. Felt like they wanted to loosen things up, throw it downfield, and see if maybe they could get a big play and a quick strike. And Folk's kick is good, and that will tie us at 3-3. So that kick gives them their first points of the game, CD, and it comes on the third drive, but hopefully... The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And it's been very much a slow start for them. Three drives and just the three points, CD. Yeah, if you're into the points per drive ratio, that answer is one. And that's not going to get it done in a ball game. They've got to find a way to finish these drives in end zones, not having balls go through goalposts. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that game. And the Browns pressure gets to him that time, and he's going to go down. It was Miles Garrett that time. He got in there and brought him down. And for the Browns, a nickel set here on third down. He'll look to throw. Trying to fit it into more, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Jeremiah Owusu So the football will be at the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. That pass complete to Moore. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And here's a give to Spears. 
And he works his way forward to pick up four yards there, second down. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. The Spears with another carry. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 45 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Well, partner, I have to say they caught him in the right defense there. Nickel set, fifth defensive back on the field, and they love to run against that because now you typically get a bigger blocker on a smaller defender. Yeah, because those DBs like you, they want the interception. They're not as worried about the running play, right? <laughs> not at all. And I, I, used to, I, I still remember being in school and one of my offensive line teammates used to say, boy, I'd love to come downfield and hit you little people. <laughs> Good run there. Hand off to Spears. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. He'll look to throw. To the right side, and he's got more complete. So give him two yards there on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. And now a run with Spears, and he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. Give him three on the run there. Now they're looking at a third and about five. Creeping up on a minute to play in this first half. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. It's a nine-yard gain, and it'll keep the drive moving. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Spears is into the end zone. Touchdown. Well, he's been the workhorse on this drive, and it would have been unfair to bring someone else in to finish the job. So they go back to him again, and he delivers with a touchdown run. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. Now this game, it has obviously been all about the defense on both sides of the football. Which offense is going to break through here? We'll see if they can do it on this drive. Now a good running play here to start the drive. That'll net them 14 yards as they pick up the first. Well, as we've learned over the years, just because a guy plays left tackle doesn't mean he doesn't have run blocking abilities. And we just saw it there. Controlled the line of scrimmage, created a big game. That's kind of a bonus. He's there to protect that high value that you have back under center, but he creates space in the run game. Yeah, not only can he dance, he can mash, too. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. It's a first down on a gain of 10. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 44-yard line. Off the play fake, he'll look to throw. That's complete downfield to Okonkwo. And he's going to get this one down to the edge of the red zone. Call that a very strong gain of 24. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. On 
first and ten at Spears. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Second and two. Escaping the pressure right. And that throw behind his man. He missed him incomplete. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come up and downfield, but they never did. On third down, here is Spears. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. He may be a bit undersized compared to the modern-day NFL defensive tackle, but when he lacks in size, he definitely makes up for it in his ability to make tackles in the run game as well. They'll go for it. It spears. And he's able to pick up the first down before he's tackled right at the 10. They only needed a few inches, and they didn't get much more than that, but by about the width of his shoelace, they convert on fourth down. Now back to throw. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on to the contact. Brings up second down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Back to throw now on second and ten. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Give him credit for excellent coverage. Tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things we're talking about in basketball because of disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. They are able to get nine yards out of that, but now it's fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Rock the ball, his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked it down? And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. Tajay Spears, his fifth rushing touchdown now on the year. And the Desperate. We are in the fourth and final quarter as the offense will have the football starting this drive first and ten. They'll start on the ground with Spears. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. 109 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. It's a 10-yard pickup, and it moves the chains. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners, taking care of the football. Because you've got to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And they went the wrong way there. Losing yardage back at the 43-yard line. The offense on third down. They've struggled to the tune of two for eight so far. This is third down and 12. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And they're going to have another first down as he's going to be tackled at the Browns 43. And they'll get 14 yards out of it and a fresh set of downs. They'll run with Spears. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. If you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a, a wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go. 
you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. The frustration evident there because he couldn't find anyone on third down, and he left no doubt that he was throwing that one away. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. Late stages of the game here in the fourth quarter as this offense takes over first and ten. They go play action here on first down. A shot downfield for Burks. And that will be incomplete. Would have been a big hitter if they had connected. Instead, it's second down. Here's a run by Spears. And not much there. Maybe a yard up to the 24. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just get the clock ticking. Third and nine here. They're going to look to throw. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. And that's where this Cleveland crowd, the dog pound in particular, make it difficult on opposing offenses. It looked like they might have had troubles communicating at the line, and it leads to the incompletion. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. And taken right at the 35. 39-yard punt, six yards on the... So now this offense will take over, and they will have the football at their own 20-yard line. Now Spears to begin the drive. Two yards on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And he'll get this up over the 25 to the 26. That's a gain of four as we slip inside of four minutes left in regulation. Third and four. This crowd urging on their defense. They're up and making noise. That is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They're going right back to Hamlin. Gets past one man, and able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. Finds a little bit of room, enough for four yards. It'll be second down. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. And he'll get it down here to the 43. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. Now the Browns signal for the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Right back to Spears. And he is going to have a first down here, and that should be the one that seals a victory. So that time they got the left guard with a hole. And let's face it, in today's ball, you might have that 330-pound guy you're supposed to clear out of there. You might need a little bit of extra help by grabbing the jersey and trying to ride him out. On second down now, Spears. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout. As they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. On third down, Spears. And he's going to come up a few yards short of the first. They get him to the ground at the 30. 
and seven. And he continues to pile up the yardage. That puts him over a buck 50 now. And this defense has really had its problems trying to keep him contained. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to perhaps salt this one away. Folks, kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, some field goals are bigger than others, and that one makes this a two-score game. And with the so this crowd will not go home happy. It's a victory for our visitors, and they were spurred on by a strong performance in that fourth quarter as they held their opponents off the scoreboard. Everyone wants to pitch a shutout for the entire game, but when you throw one in the fourth quarter, that tells everyone that you're getting stronger and dominance is starting to take over, right? The way that you close, the way that you finish, that gets preached to you from the time you're playing Little League football all the way up through. And they closed them out with a big-time performance down the stretch. So for San Antonio, it's an ideal start as they move to 3-0 now. It's week four of the NFL, and it's Tajay Spears. He had the D's number a week ago, over 150 yards rushing. It's the Desperados and the Bengals, and it's coming up next on Madden Football. EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Lone Star State and the Alamo City of San Antonio, Texas. Today it's week four, and we've got what should be a great one here as it'll be the Cincinnati Bengals taking on the Desperados of San Antonio. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon along with Charles Davis. And Charles, we take a look at this San Antonio team as they interplay. They've got to be pleased with the start to this season. Obviously, a perfect 3-0. Three good quality wins, too. It's got people in the locker room excited. They're thinking that this could be their year. Meanwhile, for the Bengals here, So the football will be at the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And that is incomplete. And there on your screen, Charles, the key and active guys out this week. And there's never anything good about any injury. But there's a silver lining to them is that it creates opportunity for someone else on the depth chart. Will they take advantage of it with good play? Or have they not prepared well thinking they'll never get on the field and they'll go out there and hurt their team? And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. You talk about this Bengals defense. They're a unit that struggled some against the run, no doubt, coming in 25th out of 32 teams. And when people talk about facing a challenge, they are certainly getting one in this ball game because they're facing the number one rushing unit in the NFL, which means this is going to be a contest they've got to be prepared for from the first snap. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Brandon, watching their tape from last week, I saw plenty of plays like we just saw there, forcing incompletions. It was key in their win last week. They're hoping the same thing happens this time out, too. And the win last week punted four times as this one's away. Oh, the return is Jones. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Bengals will take over here first and ten. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And they're brought out by the former Washington Husky, undrafted back in 2019, Jake Browning. That was a... The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, it might goes out a little extra motion. So now they get a chance to get back out. So, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan in on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves job that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. 
They'll look to throw now on first down. That one's taken in by Spears. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. So the completion good for six yards. And it'll be second down. Now a give right side. Spears. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there. First down. Partners, not often that I expect running backs to eclipse 100 yards in back-to-back -back games. But he left 100 way behind last week. I think he's going to do it again. I'm expecting 150 or more. And last week, AFC Offensive Player of the Week. So if he does what you say he might, maybe he'll get another one. Yeah, I think he's locked in. From the 43, here's second down and five. Looking to throw. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. Against a team coming off a win, just as your team did the previous week, you talk about being physical all game long. Sometimes being physical is just being on the spot and helping force the incompletion. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. And this pass defense, they were sensational in the win last week, and they're looking good here so far in this first quarter. You know, we often talk about how offenses get locked in, and that runs over multiple games where they're really, you know, in that zone. Defenses can be the exact same way, and I think we're seeing an example of it here. And a nice return that time gets 12 yards back, and the Bengals take over first and 10. Nothing on the scoreboard, 0-0, zero, zero, as the offense gets ready to take over the football. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before it's taken down. An ideal beginning of the drive there is they'll get 20 and a first down. They'll look to throw here. Open man Hamler, that's complete. And they get to him after a gain of six to the 46. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. So they'll come up in Bengals territory now with a first and 10 at the 48-yard line. And his throw here is incomplete. K.J. Hamler, the intended receiver, but it'll be second down. You talk about this Bengals defense, Against the pass, just numbers that they haven't liked. Number 30 in the league right now. You know, when actors get ready for a scene, they often ask the question, what's my motivation? Or what's the motivation of this group? What's their mindset? What's the problem that they have? Will they create an identity that allows them to get better? They'll need to get this to the 38. That's where the first down marker is here on third. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. Points one, two, and three in their defensive game plan was to get to the quarterback and knock the ball free. They did it there. Luckily, offense hangs on to it. Yeah, that's got to serve as a wake-up call, though, because they can't afford to let the ball go over to the defense and miss opportunities. And I'm not saying it happened here, but you know what a good rule of thumb is when a play like that occurs? You know who usually recovers it? The guy who missed his... So this offense will head back out there. Already an excellent field position thanks to the interception. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Oh, and that is incomplete. Brandon, we saw these defenders fly into the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. And that'll be incomplete. 
Well, I think completions on first and second down. It certainly seems like a reflection of what we've seen so far in this game. The defense, quicker to the punch so far. Let's see if they can get something going here on third down. The chance of wasting this great starting field position, a real threat. This is third and long. That's complete. It's Josh Wiley. And he'll be stopped at the 27-yard line, well short of the first down marker. Second quarter now, San Antonio in possession as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. Folks' kick is good, and it's 3-0 here in the second quarter. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a... And we drop you in at the start of this next possession in a 3-0 ball game. They'll send one of those two tight ends in motion. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he is into the end zone for a touchdown. So the football will be at the 25-yard line as this offense gets set to take over. They'll try and start this drive in the air. This is Hamler on the receiving end. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven past the 30 to the 32. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before you get a good head of steam going. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Early on, the running game's been working well, and the offensive line has been pleased by that. The thought process there, catch those safeties creeping up, trying to help against the running game. They tried to hit him over the top unsuccessfully. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. They're able to convert with a gain of four. A lot depend on the spot there, and he got it. But it wasn't by much, was it? I remember Coach Madden talking about, depending on which foot the official used, that would tell you whether you had the first down or not. You want that upfield foot to be the one that spots the ball, don't you? And you and I have the luxury of a couple extra views here in the booth, and he did get it, but not by much. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Into space at the 45. Now he's free at the 35. K.J. Hamler. And touchdown! K.J. Hamler. All right, after the touchdown, this offense back out there to see what they can do. They'll have a first and 10 at the 25-yard line. They'll look to throw here on first down. And it's knocked away and incomplete. We know he has a lot of confidence in his arm and likes to force it downfield, but the coverage was tight there. Fortunate it wasn't picked off. On second down, Spears. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. 62 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. I'm not sure how much more evidence they need, partner, than to understand that if they don't start to slow him down, it's going to be a long afternoon here at the stadium because he is just shredding them at this point. And let's face it, coming into the game, they knew he would be the focal point of their attack. This is going to take an 11-man unit on the defensive side to start making plays. On the toss, it's Spears. And he'll do a nice job here just to fight his way back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. And they'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. On third down, he'll drop to throw. 
Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. It certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. And a fair catch signal for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. They call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And it will be for... So the offense set to take the field here. They will have the football with less than a minute to go in the first half. And they'll indeed start on the ground to run that clock. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Now a play fake here on first down. and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So now then, the big play has them all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. They'll drop to throw. Throws right side, and that's complete. Touchdown! Chigakakro in the final seconds of the first half. And the Desperados have taken the lead here in the final stages of this first half. Charles, every time. So this offense will head back out there already in excellent field position thanks to the interception. On first down. Spears, and they're going to stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and ten. Now a second and ten. Second and ten at the Bengals' 27-yard line. They'll keep it on the ground. Spears down to the 25. The second down play, not much better than the first, just a gain of one there. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you. Touchdown! Traylon Burks, 25 yards for the touchdown. And the Desperado... The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out, looking to repeat that in Charles's defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Looking left side, he's got it complete. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. That'll put him right at 99 yards receiving now as he's got a first down. First down. First and 10 at the 30 yard line. They'll set up a throw. Flushed out right. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. It'll go as a gain of four, and that will bring up second down. Up the middle they go. Spears. Down the numbers. There he goes. And they will finally get to him down at the Bengals' 37-yard line. 112 yards for him on the ground now, as he has been terrific here this afternoon. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Now a handoff up the middle. Spears, a good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. Well, you 
they certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense get a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. And he's going to go down. They sack him back right around the 30. Trey Hendrickson showing off his pass rush repertoire that time. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. He sets to fire deep. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. I know conventional wisdom says, hey, don't get it all back in one play. But sometimes, you go ahead and try to. They tried to get it all back on that one. Weren't able to do so. Oh, it's intercepted. A drive killer there. And the Bengals are going to have it here at their own 32-yard line. After a good punt, this offense will start with tough field position inside the 10. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he's brought down the back before they get it across the 20-yard line. 15 yards is the pick up there, and the drive starting very nicely. First down. They'll keep it on the ground. Spears. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 15 more yards there, and quickly another first down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come. Back now in San Antonio. As we're about ready to rock and roll for the fourth and final quarter. Right side, it's Hamler pulling it in. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. When you call a wide receiver screen, no matter how many blockers you get in front of the guy that catches the ball, there's still an aspect of the guy catching it, turning into a runner, breaking tackles and creating his own yardage, and he just did on that play. Now a fake on the jet sweep, and they'll instead run up the middle, and he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Two yards, good enough for a first. That's another San Antonio first down. First and 10 at the 47 yard The play action fake, they'll look to throw. A cop roll holds it in left side. And they're gonna be set down around the 15 yard line. Well, he ran free there after the catch as that winds up going for 38. So after the big play, look at this, all the way down at the 15 now on first and 10. And it's caught. Touchdown. Traylon Burks. Two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Desperados are about to make it four straight as they add to this fourth quarter advantage. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And it would seem as if their three-game winning streak is about to go to four, but still a little work to do as they start first and ten. 165 yards rushing for him now as his sensational afternoon continues. Good gain there on first down and keeps him in a running situation probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking, nice hole for him, ends up picking up nice yardage, stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. And this offense on third down today, they've converted three times and eight chances. This is third and four. Out of the gun to give to Spears. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. 
Now here's a give to Spears. He can't get him down. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Well, their passing attack, even though that one was incomplete, has been really sharp in this one. It's resulted in a lot of touchdowns, and it looks like they're not going to stop throwing the football until the very end of this one. Well, that will certainly make everyone involved on offense pretty happy because that gives them all a chance to pad their stats a bit. But as far as the actual need, you and I both know they can just run this clock out because this one, it was over a long time ago. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. First and 10 at the 38 yard line. Here's Ward. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. It, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from walking down the game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. 15 yards on the play, first down. It carries like that. That's how they're going to continue to salt this thing away here, Charles, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, how about that? A new set of downs. Clock continues to move. No better way to close out a game than to tap those mastodons you have up front and say, guys, keep pounding them. Let's keep the ball, keep their offense on the sidelines, and let's close this one out. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's our home team here in possession of the football as we come back. They've got it first and goal in a game that appears to have already been decided. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. The Spears with another carry. And they'll get him down just shy of the goal line at about the one. He'll get two out of that run, and it's going to bring up a second and goal. All of a sudden, those lanes that were there earlier in the drive dry up near the goal line. That's a good job defensively to diagnose the run and stop it for a very short pickup. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It's a loss of two, now third down. He'll drop the throw. And it's caught. A terrific job there to keep him out of the end zone. And now it'll be fourth and goal. A short game that doesn't get him the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Here we go on fourth down. And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. Tajay Spears with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Desperados are going to be moving to 4-0 as they extend their lead. But this defense held out as long. Well, this game, it was well in hand early, never really in doubt. Charles, you and I do so many games together. There's so much parity in the NFL, a lot of close battles. This was not one. Tip your cap to them for a really impressive effort. Yeah, and you know, as the game went on, I think the defense kind of got together and said, you see our guys on offense, they're just putting up point after point. We need to leave our mark somehow, too, and they did it, pitching a second-half shutout. 